GPU undervolting is something that I bring up quite often in my videos, but I realize that I don't have a single complete guide to point you guys to if you want to do the same thing. So this is that video. First of all, some of you might be wondering what is GPU undervolting and why would I want to do it in the first place? To summarize, the goal of GPU undervolting is to lower the operating voltage or V core of your GPU, but also keep the clock frequency the same. The result is that you won't lose any performance or frame rate in games but with that lower operating voltage, your GPU will now be running a lot cooler, a bit quieter, and also requiring a bit less juice. After all, why allow your GPU to run hotter and louder than it needs to? So today we're taking five GPUs from different generations, walking through the undervolting process for each, and seeing what sort of results we get in terms of thermals, fan speed, and power consumption. So there are plenty of reasons why you might want to undervolt your GPU, but the most common one is if your graphics card is just running too hot and too loud when you're running your games at full load. It's not uncommon for undervolting to net you an easy 5 to 7 degree drop along with reduced noise, so it's definitely worth it in that regard. This is definitely relevant for small form factor PC cases that don't have a lot of room for active intake and exhaust fans, and also just for really power hungry GPUs in general like the RTX 2080 Ti, Vega 64, and so on. The other less common reason is if you've recently upgraded the GPU in your system, but maybe your power supply isn't powerful enough to run it with the default voltage settings. This is more common with mini ITX pre-built systems that use power bricks or weaker power supplies in general. Undervolting can be super handy there too. So here are the five GPUs that will be undervolting today. The first is AMD's Vega 56 with the reference blower style cooler that is notoriously loud and just not that great in terms of cooling. I'm expecting to see some serious results here from undervolting this one. Next, we have Nvidia's GTX 1080 Ti from the Pascal generation. Definitely quite power hungry, no doubt. And the specific model that we've got here is the factory overclocked SC2 from EVGA. We'll also throw in the RX 590, which uses the Polaris architecture, seeing as the RX 500 series are some of the most popular gaming GPUs that you'll see today, but power consumption and noise generally are not in their favor. We'll of course also take a look at the famous RX 5700 XT, which is one of the most popular GPUs at the moment, and we'll see whether undervolting is worth it here too. And lastly, we'll take a look at the RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition that uses a relatively effective two slot cooler, but spoiler alert, we're able to significantly reduce the power, noise, and thermals here while sustaining its typical boost clock of over 1900 megahertz. All right, so let's jump right in, starting with our very hot and loud Vega 56, and just to get things set up first, you will want to be running a GPU benchmark loop in the background, such as Unigen Heaven 4.0, as this way we can stress test our undervolt in real time to test whether it's stable. You'll also want to download Hardware Info, which is the program that you see on the left here. This gives us a bunch of useful data, such as the GPU temperature, operating voltage, clock speed, and fan speed. To actually set our undervolt for AMD GPUs, I recommend using the tuning section in the AMD Radeon control control panel, you can access this by right clicking your desktop and selecting it there. But by opening up the GPU tuning section, you'll notice these frequency and voltage states to the left of the panel here, which basically specifies the voltages that the GPU will run at when operating at a given clock speed. The clock speed values we won't be touching in this guide, seeing as we're not going to be underclocking the card, but we will gradually be lowering the voltage values right below them. For most AMD GPUs as well, you'll also likely want to push this power limit slide to its max value, as even after undervolting, you still might be limiting your clock speeds and performance here if that's set to plus 0%, especially for cards using the reference cooler. So with everything set up, let's go ahead and begin reducing the voltage values. For the reference Vega 56 here, I can actually get away with a pretty decent reduction in voltage, and we can test this by clicking the apply changes button at the top right. The main change that we see with this card is that the clock speed is now completely stable at 1450 megahertz. We'll take a close a look at this in just a minute. So now that we're stable with these settings, we can reduce things a little bit further, mainly focusing on these last few voltage values here, seeing as that's what the card will actually run at. I was able to reduce the final target voltage to just 900 millivolts before the benchmark
benchmark crashed. And so this gives me a pretty good idea of what a rough safe undervolt would be. In this case, after some trial and error, this is what I settled with. I'd also recommend stress testing your GPU with something a bit more demanding than Heaven 4.0, such as an actual game, after you've found the rough values that you'd like to apply here. Once you've settled on an undervolting profile, you can save it by clicking the profile button in the top right hand corner. Now for the reference Vega 56, we don't get a huge reduction in thermals, about four degrees C when everything is said and done with the fan speed running 200 RPM slower as well. But the main benefit here is stabilizing performance. Whereas previously, even raising the power limit to max wasn't enough to stabilize the clock speed illustrated here in orange, undervolting does allow the GPU clock speed to stable at around 1450 megahertz, allowing for a much more consistent frame rate and gaming experience. For the 5700 XT, it is basically the same method using the tuning section in the new AMD Radeon control panel, but the frequency and voltage states here are a lot simpler. We basically only need to worry about reducing that last single value. For this card, I was able to reduce the target voltage to 1050 millivolts before I saw any crashing. So 1100 millivolts is what I'm going to set as our undervolted profile. The card that I've got here is the power color Red Dragon, which has a slight factory overclock. As we can see, it's running at two gigahertz with the power limit raised, but for reference models with lower clock speeds, you'll be able to undervolt them a little bit further. So here we get similar results to the Vega 56, not a huge reduction when it comes to GPU thermals, about a four degree C reduction compared to when we have the power limit raised to max. Also note that this is with the GPU running on an open test bench with an ambient room temperature of 24 degrees C. We do get a significant reduction when we take a look at the junction slash hotspot temperature though, whereas previously with the power limit raised, we would see the junction temperature hit the limit of 105C. With the undervolt in place, we see it peak at just 96C. What's more impressive is that this is with a significantly reduced fan speed as well, over a 400 RPM reduction, which will result in a much more quieter gaming system. It gets better though, because along with the significantly lower fan speed, almost a 10 degree drop in the GPU junction temp and a huge drop in power consumption also, which we'll look at in just a minute, the 5700 XT is now running at a much more stable clock speed and also about 100 megahertz higher on average. So really it's a win-win on all fronts here. If you have a 5700 XT, undervolting is highly recommended and is pretty easy to do also. A lot of you are still running Radeon RX 500 series cards though, and undervolting is quite straightforward there too. Very similar to undervolting the Vega series GPUs with similar voltage targets in mind. This card that I've got here is a factory overclocked RX 590, which is already a factory overclocked RX 580. So don't expect massive drops here, seeing as this card is already pushed pretty hard. We do have multiple voltage targets here towards the left of the panel, just as with the Vega 56. But I will mention that although the voltage states that it tops out at 1150 millivolts, by checking hardware info on the left, we can actually see that it tops out at over 1200 millivolts. So for the RX 590, I was able to reduce the operating voltage to around 1140 millivolts by setting the last few targets to 1120 millivolts. Odd, I know, but that's how AMD software seems to work some of the time. Nevertheless, there's not a huge drop in GPU thermals here, around a two to three C drop on average. But as with the 5700 XT, we do get a noticeable drop in fan speed over 300 RPM in this instance. So if you really wanted, you could easily make up your own custom fan curve to bring that fan speed back up to where it was initially for the trade-off embedded GPU thermals, but that's totally up to you. All right, now moving on to some NVIDIA GPUs, starting with our RTX 2080 Super. The method here is a bit different seeing as we'll now be using MSI Afterburner to access the voltage and frequency curve and make adjustments there. If you haven't got MSI Afterburner downloaded, I'll leave a link to it down below. Alternatively, you could use EVGA's Precision X1, but I found Afterburner to be a bit easier and much quicker. So once you've got it open along with hardware info and Heaven 4.0 running in the background, you're going to press Control F to bring up the voltage and frequency curve. And just as we saw previously, this curve defines the voltages that the GPU will run at while operating at a given frequency. On the X-axis, we have voltage. On the Y-axis, we have the frequency 
frequency or clock speed, and so we can effectively undervolt the GPU by dragging one of the lower voltage points, like 1000 millivolts, up to the same frequency as the GPU's max, in this case 1920 megahertz, and then pressing apply. So effectively we're taking what the GPU would already boost to, around 1920 megahertz, and running that at a lower voltage than usual. To keep undervolting we just need to keep doing more of the same here, picking a lower voltage point, dragging that up to match the top point of the existing curve, clicking apply, and then the rest will fill itself in. Keep doing this until you notice the benchmark crashing or artifacting, and then add roughly 30 to 50 millivolts to that for an actual stable 24 seven undervolt in games. For the 2080 Super, I was seeing crashes at around 880 millivolts, and so I set the effective undervolt to 925 millivolts, which is still over a 100 millivolt reduction from stock. To save this profile, click the save icon towards the right, select one of the numbers, and now that profile will be saved. Also make sure that MSI Afterburner is set to open on startup. You can set that by clicking the gear icon towards the middle and then checking it on the first tab. Now seeing as we're locking both the max voltage and frequency of the GPU here, we're not going to see gains and stabilization of the GPU clock like we saw with the AMD cards previously, but we will see larger drops in GPU thermals, power consumption, and fan speed. So for GPU thermals, we see a pretty significant drop of 6 degrees C, and this is whilst operating at a fan speed of over 200 RPM less. Also notice that the fan speed is a lot less aggressive compared to stock, which ramps up quite a lot quicker. All right, now lastly, we have the GTX 1080 Ti, and this one's quite interesting because the voltage and frequency curve actually goes beyond what the GPU would naturally boost to. Specifically, this card is boosting to only around 1900 megahertz, but the graph plots all the way up to 2000 megahertz. So we can't just drag the lower voltage plots up to the 2000 megahertz mark like we would have done with the RTX 2080 Super, as that would crash Heaven 4.0 instantly and just would not be stable. What we want to do instead is click a point on the curve, any point, hold the Alt key, and then drag the curve down until the top part of the curve lines up with the GPU's current boost clock, in this case that's 1900 megahertz. From there we can do exactly what we did with the RTX 2080 Super, bringing the lower voltage points up to match the active frequency. I'll also note that MSI Afterburner sometimes freaks out when you do this and the voltage frequency won't always apply your edit properly, so you might have to repeat it a couple of times. Anyway, for this card we don't see a massive reduction, seeing as it is a factory overclocked model. 980 millivolts is what I found to be a rock solid and stable undervolt for this card. This gave us around a 5 degree drop in GPU thermals, definitely not bad at all. The 1080 Ti now runs at 67 degrees C with a room ambient temp of 25 C. VRM thermal C, a nice little drop too, around 4 degrees C here, and the fan speed was just slightly lower, around 50 RPM on average. So the biggest thing worth noting here is that undervolting factory overclocked cards is going to be a lot more challenging and difficult, simply for the reason that you are essentially applying both an overclock and an undervolt at the same time, when compared to the stock spec of that GPU. Still, you can get some definitely worthwhile results depending on the card. And lastly, let's take a look at the reduction in power consumption here for all of the GPUs that we just undervolted, and here we can see some pretty decent reductions across the board. Here we're looking at the total system power consumption at the wall whilst running the Heaven 4.0 benchmark, of which the GPU is of course mostly responsible for the total values that you see here. Most noteworthy, the RTX 2080 Super dropped 60 watts with our undervolt applied, and this makes it the least power hungry GPU on this graph and also the most powerful. The 5700 XT also sees some massive drops here of around 50 watts, with the other cards consistently pulling around 30 watts less at full load. So most modern GPUs can actually be undervolted quite easily, and it's something that I definitely encourage users to explore if they want their system to run cooler, quieter, and more efficient. The only single potential downside that undervolting introduces is the possible instability in some games, but if you follow this guide, which encourages a conservative undervolt compared to what the GPU would crash with in Heaven 4.0, you'll most likely be fine. If you do encounter the occasional crash, just bump the voltage by 10 mil volts at a time and save that. So I hope you guys found this useful. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.